Affluent Treatment Plan What is an ETP? ETP Affluent Treatment Plan is a process designed for treating the industrial wastewater for its reuse or safe disposal to the environment. Influent Untreated Industrial Wastewater Affluent Treated Industrial Wastewater Sludge Solid part separated from wastewater by ETP. Need of ETP To clean industry affluent and recycle it for further use. To reduce the usage of fresh or potable water in industries. To cut expenditure on water procurement. To meet the standards for emission or discharge of environmental pollutants from various industries set by the government and avoid hefty penalties. To safeguard environment against pollution and contribute in sustainable development. Design of ETP The design and size of the ETP depends upon quantity and quality of the industry's discharge affluent, land availability, monetary considerations for construction, operation and maintenance. Area dimension depends on quality of wastewater to be treated, flow rate, type of biological treatment to be used. In case of less available land, CETP, Common Affluent Treatment Plan, is preferred over ETP. Treatment Levels and Mechanisms of ETP Treatment Levels Preliminary, Primary, Secondary, Tertiary or Advanced Treatment Mechanisms Physical, Chemical, Biological Preliminary treatment level Purpose Physical separation of big size impurities like cloth, plastic, wood log, paper, etc. Common physical unit operations at preliminary level are Screening A screen with openings of uniform size is used to remove large solids such as plastic, cloth, etc. Generally, maximum 10 mm is used. Sedimentation Physical water treatment process using gravity to remove suspended solids from water. Clarification Use for separation of solids from fluids. Primary treatment level Purpose Removal of floating and settleable materials such as suspended solids and organic matter. Methods both physical and chemical methods are used in this treatment level. Chemical unit processes Chemical unit processes are always used with the physical operations and may also be used with the biological treatment processes. Chemical processes use the addition of chemicals to the wastewater to bring about the changes in its quality. Example, pH control, coagulation, chemical precipitation and oxidation. pH control to adjust the pH in the treatment process to make the wastewater pH neutral for acidic wastes low pH NaOH Na2CO3 CaCO3 or CaOH2 for alkali wastes high pH H2SO4 HCl chemical coagulation and flocculation coagulation refers to the collecting minute solid particles dispersed in a liquid into larger mass. Chemical coagulation and flocculation Chemical coagulants like Al2SO43 also called alum or Fe2SO43 are added to the wastewater to improve the attraction among fine particles so that they come together and form larger particles called flocks. A chemical flocculant, usually a polyelectrolyte, enhances the flocculation process by bringing together particles to form larger flocks, which settle out more quickly. Flocculation is aided by gentle mixing 
which causes the particles to collide. Secondary treatment level methods Biological and chemical processes are involved in this level. Biological unit process to remove or reduce the concentration of organic and inorganic compounds. Biological treatment process can take many forms but all are based around microorganisms, mainly bacteria. Secondary treatment level Aerobic processes Aerobic treatment processes takes place in the presence of air oxygen, utilizes those microorganisms aerobes, which use molecular or free oxygen to assimilate organic impurities that is convert them into carbon dioxide, water and biomass. Anaerobic processes The anaerobic treatment processes takes place in the absence of air oxygen, utilizes microorganisms anaerobes which do not require air molecular or free oxygen to assimilate organic impurities. The final products are methane and biomass. Now let's take a look into activated sludge process. Tertiary or advanced treatment Purpose Final cleaning process that improves wastewater quality before it's reused, recycled or discharged to the environment. Mechanism Removes remaining inorganic compounds and substances such as nitrogen and phosphorus. Bacteria, viruses and parasites which are harmful to public health are also removed at this stage. Methods Alum used to help remove additional phosphorus particles and group the remaining solids together for easy removal in the filter. Chlorine contact tank disinfects the tertiary treated wastewater by removing microorganisms in treated wastewater including bacteria, viruses and parasites. Remaining chlorine is removed by adding sodium bisulfate just before its discharge. Let's take a look into the flowchart for the ETP. Let's go through the case study. This is the ETP process design for a typical textile factory. This is the textile industry share chart which includes value in billion and share in the percentage. Let's see textile production flow diagram. This chart illustrates water consumption levels in the textile industry. This chart illustrates water consumption levels in the textile industry. This chart shows emission, wastewater and solid waste generated at different stages of textile production. Affluent characteristics from typical textile industry. Wastewater characteristics process wise. Important characteristics of wastewater from textile industry. Human carcinogenic compound. ETP plant operation 1. Screen chamber Remove relatively large solids to avoid abrasion of mechanical equipments and clogging of hydraulic system 2. Collection tank The collection tank collects the affluent water from the screening chamber, stores and then pumps it to the equalization tank.
free equalization tank the affluents do not have similar concentration at all the time the ph will vary time to time affluents are stored from 8 to 12 hours in the equalization tank resulting in a homogeneous mixing of affluents and helping in a neutralization it eliminates shock loading on the subsequent treatment system continuous mixing also eliminates settling of solids within the equalization tank reduces ss tss four flash mixer coagulants were added to the affluents one line 802000 ppm to correct the ph up to 8 to 9 two alum 200 to 300 ppm to remove color three poly electrolyte 0.2 ppm to settle the suspended matters and reduce ss tss the addition of the above chemicals by efficient rapid mixing facilitates homogeneous combination of flocculates to produce microflocks five clariflocculator in the clariflocculator the water is circulated continuously by the stirrer overflowed water is taken out to the aeration tank the solid particles are settled down and the collected separately and dried this reduces ss tss flocculation provides slow mixing that leads to the formation of microflocks which then settles out in the clarifier zone the settled solids that is primary sludge are pumped into the sludge drying beds six aeration tank the water is passed like a thin film over the different arrangements like staircase shape dosing of urea and dap is done water gets direct contact with the air to dissolve the oxygen into water bod and cod values of the water is reduced up to 90 percentage seven clarifier the clarifier collects the biological sludge The overflowed water is called as treated affluent and disposed out. The outlet water quality is checked to be within the accepted limit as delineated in the norms of the Bureau of Indian Standards. Through pipelines, the treated water is disposed into the environment river water, barren land, etc. 8. Sludge thickener The inlet water consists of 60% water plus 40% solids. The affluent is passed through the centrifuge. Due to centrifugal action, the solids and the liquids are separated. The sludge thickener reduces the water content in the affluent to 40% water plus 60% solids. The affluent is then reprocessed and the sludge collected at the bottom. 9. Nine drying beds. Primary and secondary sludge is dried on the drying beds. Flowchart of ETP. Screening. Screening is the filtration process for the separation of the coarse particles from influent. Stainless steel net with varying pore size can be utilized. Screens are cleaned regularly to avoid clogging. Equalization tank. Equalization makes the wastewater homogeneous. Retention time depends upon the capacity of the treatment plant. Generally 8 to 16 hours. pH correction. In this tank pH of the influent is corrected to meet the standard acid or alkali is added to the affluent to increase or decrease the pH disperse unit disperse tank mixes the sludge coming from recycle tank with the wastewater for to proper aeration aeration Function of aeration is oxidation by blowing air. Aerobic bacteria is used to stabilize and remove organic material present in the waste.
schematic diagram of aeration Let's take a look into sedimentation tank. Let's take a look into sedimentation tank. Affluent discharge. Sludge thickening unit. Here, sludge is dried and discharged. Partial amount of sludge is returned back to the aeration tank from thickening unit through cycle tank called return sludge tank and disperse tank. Schematic diagram of sludge thickening unit. Dried sludge. ETP plant operation. Function of return tank or recycle tank is to mix water with sludge. This mixture is then passed to aeration tank through dispersed tank. Advantage of recycle sludge to aeration tank. Sludge again oxidized to minimize the pollution from sludge. A live bacteria of sludge is again used in aeration to utilize this bacteria. Permissible standards in India. WT Infra Projects WT Infra Projects Private Limited Excellence in Water and Wastewater Treatment Solutions since 2007 Follow us for more insights